Welcome to the Wednesday evening Bible study here at New Baptist Church. Uh, I'm Robin Crouch. I'll be sharing with you today. I hope you're enjoying the warmer weather, the opportunity to be outside. You know, the coming of spring this year really has brought with it a sense of hope. Uh, because of the vaccine, certainly, uh, we seem to be coming somewhat out of the pandemic. Uh, not fully uh, yet, but we are still practicing the protocols at the church uh, of sitting distanced and wearing our masks. Uh, but we're going to return uh, to a little sense of normalcy. Uh, we'll begin uh, by opening up uh, on our Wednesday evening services. But let me say that it really was good to see some of you on Sunday, on Resurrection Day, as we celebrated it together. Uh, and here we are just a few days now after Easter, and I want to pick up on the story uh, and look at one particular encounter uh, in that story tonight. We'll get back to the Psalms next week, uh, but there was just this encounter. It's with the men on the road to Emmaus. It's one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture, and I think there are things that, that we can learn uh, from this story that's really important for us. You know, that week, uh, that what we call Holy Week, uh, those that had followed Jesus were bewildered, uh, and in somewhat despair at the end of the week, Many had left Jerusalem on the journey home before the women uh, had found the empty tomb. Others heard the news of the empty tomb, but they still didn't understand. Uh, quickly, let's take a look at that week, uh, that what we call Holy Week. You know, Jesus enters Jerusalem in a tri as a triumphant king. Uh, he receives the worship of the people, and then he cleanses the temple. He's continually that week questioned by the religious leaders. One of his disciples, Judas, agrees to betray him. He's arrested and subjected to trials, all of them illegal. Pilate gives Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus dies and is buried. The women find the body missing on Sunday morning. The week that had begun on a high note ends in despair for those who did not understand what had happened. Well, let's pick up the story now in Luke chapter 24. It says, That very day, speaking of the day the women found the tomb empty, uh, two of them were going uh, to a village named Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem that does not know the things that have happened in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God, and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women from our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying, that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. And he said to them, O foolish one, slow of heart to believe, all the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them and all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village uh, to which they were going. He acted as if he was going further, but they urged him uh, strongly saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. 
they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us uh, on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, the Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them the breaking of the bread. Pray with me. Father, thank you for, the, for this event in Scripture. Now use it to teach us that we can trust even in the midst of despair. Thank you again. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I read this story and as I think about it, I wonder what can we learn from it? Well, first is that Jesus meets us at our point of need. Let me share with you what I mean. He, he comes to us. Uh, you know, when we are confused and in despair, Jesus comes to us. He saddles up beside us as our companion and friend. Let me illustrate that with a story from my own life. One of my closest friends and I have been friends for well over 50 years. He and his wife have two children, but they've had five pregnancies. A son was born and then a miscarriage. Then a stillborn. Then a tubal pregnancy that threatened the life of his wife. Then on Christmas in 1986, his wife was taken to the hospital two months early. What anxiety that produced. I'd called my friend on Christmas morning to wish him Merry Christmas, and he told me what was happening. I asked if he wanted me to come to the hospital, and he said it wasn't necessary. Well, we drove from our place in Wheeling uh, down to Becky's folks, Taze Valley, and we were there uh, all afternoon wondering, should I go on to the hospital? Well, we left Becky's folks and went down to my mom's house, and there uh, we just uh, sat and thought, no, I've got to go to the hospital. Well, my mom said, you're not going without me, and my sister said, you're not going without me, and so the three of us went. Well, when we got to the hospital, being a pastor, I knew where to go. I went straight to labor and delivery. I found the board uh, there, the progress board, and found the room that they were in. Uh, I went, found my friend and his wife. We prayed together, and as I was getting ready to leave to go back out to the waiting room, his wife looks at me and says, Robin, would you stay right here? He really needs you. That night, my friend and I walked the halls. We talked. We prayed. We sat with his wife. Well, the baby was born and immediately taken to the neonatal intensive care unit. That baby's now 34, healthy, and a mom herself. That night, though, my friend, in moments of fear and despair, simply needed a companion, a friend to come to walk and talk and listen to him and just be there with him. You know, in the same way, Jesus comes to walk and talk and listen to us in our times of despair, distress, and confusion. But Jesus didn't just show up to walk and talk and saddle up beside these men. He also taught them did you catch that? When they didn't understand, Jesus took the scriptures. And it says, from the beginning to the end, he explained what they taught about him. <laughs> now, the truth is, I'd really like to have a recording of, of that explanation and that conversation. But he explained that he was the deliverer. That he was God's provider, the rock of our salvation, the sacrificial lamb of God, the promised Messiah, Emmanuel. On and on we could go, but I think you get the idea. Jesus taught them about himself, and he wants to do that for us too. See, when we're confused, he wants to use the scriptures to teach us about himself. These two needed a teacher to explain to them the scriptures, and maybe you do too. Not only can God's Spirit teach you, but you can learn 
as you read the Bible and pray. I would suggest that you get a daily reading plan. That's why we encourage you to read through the scripture each year. It's just so that as the more we get to know God's word, the more we get to know the Father, the more, the more we get to know the Son, and the more he uses his word to comfort us, to lead us in those difficult times of life, and to show us, even in those great times, his presence. He can also use not just the scripture, but he could use a small group, like a Sunday school class, or a small discussion group or maybe even a preacher to help you understand just who Jesus is. You see, Jesus also reveals himself to us. At dinner, it says, as he broke the bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. As Jesus broke bread, they understood that they were with the risen Lord and their faith was renewed. He was risen. He had appeared to them. <laughs> and then he was gone. And what did they do? Immediately, it says, that very hour, they went back to Jerusalem. They found the disciples. They heard there that he had appeared to Peter, but they told him, wait, we know he's appeared to us. Now the question is, what are you doing? Are you talking, taking a walk toward your Emmaus? You know, it's after Easter. And I wonder how many, even though we had a great celebration here, even though we do it every year and we have years behind us now since the, since the resurrection, but I wonder how many are wandering around, heading home, with heads hung in confusion and despair. Well, let me say that if you are, what you need is a companion. You need one who would teach and you need one who would show who Jesus really is. Today, Jesus walks with you, ready to listen to your heart's deepest hurts, disappointments, questions. He wants to be your constant companion. You just have to ask him. But he wants to help you understand just who he is. He'll do that from the scripture. That's one way. He wants to reveal himself to you as the Savior, the Lord of your life. And he does that as we commit ourselves to him. And as these two, as we share in that Lord's Supper, as we share in the breaking of bread, we get to see who he is. You no longer need to walk in darkness, in the darkness of despair and confusion, but by faith in Jesus, you can walk in the light, knowing that you are forgiven, that you have eternal life, and you have one who will never leave you. No, not ever. What a great promise. It's a great week. This week, as you walk, listen, learn, and fall more in love with Jesus as he reveals himself to you. Thank you. Have a good evening. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, again, I give you thanks for the opportunity we have to gather together around your word. Lord, for stories like this, events like this, that give us hope that let us know that you love us, that you come alongside of us, that you teach us and you reveal yourself to us. Oh God, let us walk in that hope day to day, the power of your resurrection. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Have a good evening.